I'm a creative. So I'm getting inspiration from their types of work, comics, from their buildings, their architecture, their language. And it's just a different vibe, you know? Nobody's gonna know what you do if you're hiding your work. It might look like trash, or somebody's gonna want that trash. My name is Council Hikvom in Nederland. I came to Netherlands because of a master's in animation and I finished in 2020. Yeah. After that, I did some motion design work for a software company and uh, did that for a year. And now I am a freelancer uh, working for myself uh, as an animation animation director. Uh, please let not bad at all. Uh, I think what helped was that I was able to grow a network of people, uh, amazing people who um, open doors for the kind of stuff I'm doing right now. I see you flexing your dots in. I'll practice all these things for it's what 800 and maybe that one. 50 something consecutive days on Duolingo. Let's talk about some of the struggles that you've experienced since you moved here, first as a student and also like transitioning into full time freelance. So, I have a background in architecture okay. and then somehow, somehow I landed in advertising. Yeah. All that architecture thing just to the wayside. Uh, animation came to the forefront, yeah. you know, digitally. And um, um, after five years of doing that, I was able to. Um, transition immediately into freelance and I think it was just like a week mm. break that a week break that I had and so coming here I think for me the only fear was that it's a Dutch market and I don't know it you know so what was that gonna look like how would I get these jobs and everything I've come to find out that it's relatively almost the same in the sense that you just have to put yourself out there and nobody's gonna know what you do if you're hiding your work. It might look like trash, or somebody's gonna want that trash. And the more trash you do eventually, the more you get good. You know, other times when, let's say, you've gone months and you haven't found like a gig or someone hasn't referred you for stuff. I'm going to knock, say there's no, <laughs> I'm going to knock on my palm because to be very honest, no. And this is coming from all the way since 2013. Let me tell you. Um, once I, when I was transitioning from architecture to, um, advertising, there was a, there was a year because I was supposed to do a master in architecture, but I think I wasn't supposed to. The universe was like, nope, we're going to suffer in during that transition period. And I suffered. Ah, there was nothing to eat. There was no money. I was hungry. I was, a lot of people don't know this. I was hungry. And it was that period. I was like, yeah, this is never gonna happen again. I will work, I will hustle. I will make sure that that's, that's not just gonna happen again. So from 2013, once I eventually entered into advertising, I just kept on grinding, creating IPs, making sure that, you know, people just from, hey, give me work, or ah, this is me. Or, it went from, ah, this is me, give me work, to ah, this is council, give him work. And um, it was really bad in Nigeria. Every time I'm like, ah, I finished this project, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just rest for like two weeks. Ah, somebody just slap me with one work. And I'm like, ah, if I reject it now, this one is juicy. That's one you reject. This one is just, and yeah. this is good. Let me take it. Before you know it, you've not. You've only rested one day. The only way I've been able to take a break is if I say I am going on vacation. Work just finds me. And I'm super, super, super grateful for that. And it's scary because sometimes you're just like, ah, man, I'm almost finishing this project. I don't know when the next one is going to cut. And and I, I'm not the kind of person that's like, ah, don't worry, work will come. I'm always scared. When is the next job going to cut? It just somehow finds me. And I'm super grateful. So glad to sure. When was the last time you went on vacation? This Christmas. Ah, uh, okay. This was in September. Uh, I went to Barcelona. Sorry, to Spain. Yeah, Girona and Barcelona. Uh, happy moments was when I graduated. I graduated in top of class and yeah, I got a prize for that. Uh, welcome tablet that I really used. It was a humbling moment for me. Um, not because of anything, but because I, I really worked hard on that project. It, it was a story that I nursed for about, boom, since 2008. And I didn't have the technical know-how to create it. So I just kept it in my head. Pray that somebody somewhere 
you know, would not um, make, it. make it. And nobody did. I created it. The reception was absolutely amazing. I went to film festival, graduated cum laude. Other moments have been, you know, I came to this country alone and I'm, I've made quite a number of friends. And that was just simply because I just got up and just went out to eat. Just went to, uh, went to a party, went to a function. It was amazing. And then I think one other uh, scene would be the trajectory I'm currently on that's about to finish the playgrounds but, um, trajectory. Yeah, it's just been, uh, it's a platform that just allowed me to meet so many people. I only just used to open my phone back home and just oh, one day, one day, you know. And it's nothing to meet these people in, in person. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this person's awesome. Or this person is, uh, boy, you have met them, you yeah. know. That door is open. They know you, you know them. And it's another thing when they know you or they've heard <laughs> about you. It is that they have met people who are like, oh, I know you. I've seen your work or you did this. I'm like, you know me? Yeah. No. You are joking. But it's just, it's just, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. So has your experience as a black man living in the Netherlands? It's been absolutely dormant. In the beginning, I felt a certain type of way because you go on trains and you go on buses and nobody wants to sit beside you. Oh, okay. As time went on, I realized no, nobody wants to sit beside anyone. It's just normal. Please keep an open mind. It's quite a liberal country, but it also ha has very conservative part. Oh, your country. Yeah. Mm. So you're coming here, gotta learn the culture. Yeah. Try to pick up one or two parts of your language. You might not be able to speak everything, but it'd be nice if you can understand. Uh, explore. We'll go everywhere and make friends. And Dutch friends, to be uh, precise. It's a country where you gotta DIY, do everything yourself. You're gonna wait for someone, and you're gonna have to wait X business days, and it'll cost you a lot of money. Bread and cheese. I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not open minded with bread and cheese thing. No. I can think about Add some other things to it. Make it a burger for first. <laughs> Oh, nobody says you go and do what you are not supposed to be doing. Or no, 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 no. But like I said, it's not your country. Don't come here and take to people. What they, no, you day or day, do your own thing. Avoid wala. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And you talk about friends and how it's important to have friendships here. What, what do you say has helped you keep that or find Dutch friends, for instance? I think for me it was particularly easier because of school. Usually when people just come here to work because you're coming straight to uh, meet colleagues and a lot of people like colleagues are not your friends or I think that bullshit because it's one of those things where you're old and you want to be telling your grandchildren or your children ah man at one time I, I went to work in the Netherlands and man I met your uncle blah 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 you know it's not technically your uncle but well, yeah. he's, uh, he's now in life, life yeah well yeah. I met your tante Blah, 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 blah. My dad has those stories, you know. Yeah, you know, people he met in places who helped him do stuff and, and you know, those, yeah. And I want to have that same, uh, I want to tell those same stories to I mean, so some people you meet only once. Yeah. Once, but ah, that one time you will never forget. Give me an old boy. I'm always <laughs> outside. I will go out. Not because I want, sometimes I just want to sit down and be in my house. What's one new thing you've done recently that you're excited about? In 2023, I traveled to, including Nigeria, six different countries. Okay. In one year. I, uh -huh. I've never, usually when I travel, it's just end of the year or some years, I won't even go anywhere. Mm -hmm. but, Six countries in one year. Yeah, that was wild. Hey, yeah, I know. Yeah. It does not cost. You can just hop on one train and enter Germany. I'm a creative. So I'm getting inspiration from their types of work or mix from their buildings, their architecture, their language. And it's just a different vibe, you know? Huh? It allows you to see things that you only read in the in the in magazines or watch on what National Geographic or, or whatever. You see them, we are live, and you realize that you, you yourself, you're nothing but just a tiny speck in this vast planet, uh, galaxy, universe. Barcelona just has a main architecture, so I want to update it in a short film I'm trying to uh, make. All the stuff I've learned is YouTube and Google. I don't go, I don't pay for courses like that. I think I only pay for one course.